Perhaps uh, prudently, in view of the invasion by the extraterrestrial, the cinema hasn't exactly been deluged with new releases in the past seven days. Most distributors know when they're beaten. But one man whom even E.T. can't knock out is Sylvester Stallone. No, it's not Rocky IV, but a much more lethal Stallone, who plays a returning Vietnam hero in First Blood. In this film, Mr. Stallone stays the almost unheard of feat of acting without his boxing gloves on. He's on the run, pursued by the local militia, and as you can see from this extract, if he had his boxing gloves on, he'd be in even deeper trouble. Stallone gives a really excellent performance in this film. He's hunted, he's haunted, he's terse of words and liberal of action. So we sent Film 82's own featherweight champion, Barbara Paskin, to box a few verbal rounds with him in Hollywood. This was a very gruelling role physically that she played in First Blood. What sort of preparation did you do to, to keep yourself fit for it? Well, luckily, I, I had just come off of Rocky III, so I was in a pretty good condition. And when I had read the script, I thought, oh, what a pleasure. After being pounded around the Rocky Three and fighting wrestlers, I'll spend a couple months in the woods just jogging about over hill and dale. It'll be easy, no problem at all. What turned out to be, first blood really was a survival course. I have never been as beaten up as in my life. But overall, I think that it really added to the film, but it, it came as a surprise. The only thing I think I really uh, did to prepare for this film was uh, buy a lot of Band-Aids and medication. <laughs> There were a lot of stunts in the film, and it looked like you'd done most of them yourself. Did mm. you, in fact? Yes, um, the majority of them, we wanted to hold it in, in one shot, so uh, I participated in the majority of them. There's a couple such as, like, I started to leap off the cliff, and then in between there was another man, and then I fell to the trees and broke my ribs on that. And, and then there was this uh, segment with the rats, and the rats were supposed to be really quite friendly, like, pet rats. Well, they're pet rats until they're thrown into sub-freezing water, and then all of a sudden pet rats become irritable rats, and they go for the first thing that's warm, which happened to be me, and they, that scene in the movie, those, they, they were coming, <laughs> they were going for broke. Now I know what it's like to be a hamburger. <laughs> This man was sent away to Vietnam to fight a war which was not his, where he was somebody, comes back to America to his own real world and doesn't fit in. He's nobody at all. Is that something that you felt was a valid statement? Oh, yes, very, very. When um, I kind of equate it to the Doberman Pinscher. Here is a dog, a working dog, that is taken and bred to attack and kill. Now, if that dog escapes, onto the street and hurt someone. Whose fault is it? Is it the dogs 
or the ones that trained him and, and accidentally let him out. So this is what happened with the character John Rambo. He went in there as a, as a I guess, normal American soldier, was trained to be a killing machine. And then he was released on the streets. And the only thing he knew how to do was to commit acts of war. So whose fault is that? How much did you empathize with him? I empathized with his uh, ability to want to be an American and defend the honor of his country and his own integrity. But I felt, how, how does a man like that express himself when he can't do it verbally, he must do it through the way the country taught him to, to be a violent machine. But he holds back, he's violent against inanimate objects. As, as a rule. I mean, he does fight back against other men, but he doesn't kill anyone. He stops short of that. He doesn't go through the, the, the most obscene taboo of all, which is murder. He attacks the police, a lot of symbols, the police cars, the police buildings, and so on. But, you know, what I liked about the character is that he keeps trying to escape. He, he, is, he is the hunted, not the hunter until finally they don't give him a chance to escape at all, and then finally he, he must revert to, to uh, his basic instincts of survival. So there is a, there is a, a tremendous dichotomy in the character. I, I liked it a great deal. I never thought the public would like it at all. I thought this is the most expensive home movie ever made. I really would like to go on with Rockies, but I don't know where I could go with them anymore. I, I feel as other people would say, oh, now it's just a payday. I think that, see, the end results of all Rockies are really, it's almost a foregone conclusion, you know. It's just how he gets there. It's almost the fight is like a dessert at the end of the meal, you know, it's gonna... But, I mean, I would have loved to have fought a Russian just one time, just one time. But I don't think I, I should do that anymore. And I, I, I really wouldn't want to do anything that would, that would damage the uh, um, trilogy. If it didn't turn out right, it, I, would, I would really hate myself. It's, it's been very good to me, so I shouldn't blast it. Come on. Come on. Come on.